hey, do you want to come over and make a pot of tea, bring your favorite crystals? You know, we could talk about our birth charts, spirits, the latest house spells we've been doing. Welcome to the neighborhood. I'm that witch next door. Welcome to season six of That Witch Podcast. I am so excited to share this episode with all of you today. Um, And also, (laughs) in the most Mercury retrograde eclipse season fashion, um, my (laughs) my audio got messed up again on this Shadow Chats episode. (laughs) again, just like uh, last new moon. Uh, So this is such a good conversation between Ashley and I. Shitty audio will never, ever hold me back from sharing such a useful and helpful and juicy conversation with my girl. Uh, So I cannot wait to share it with you. I'm so excited to be kicking off season six with you. Thanks for always being cool and understanding when we've got little technical glitches like this. Um, My poor, poor editor husband does his very, very best. And actually, Ashley, Ashley and I did our best and it still <laughs> it still happened again this time. So we working on it. We'll get it back to, to where it's been and the lovely audio quality you're all used to. But in the meantime, sit back, relax as much as you can during this very, very active eclipse energy. And I hope that you find this episode entertaining, insightful and helpful. And I cannot wait to hear what you think. Hello, my wonderful witchy neighbor. Welcome to today's very, very special, I can already kind of feel the electricity of this one episode of That Witch Podcast. It is time for a deep dive into this upcoming new moon solar eclipse. So of course, we have our wonderful Ashley Michelle here for some shadow chats today. Hey, Ash. Hello, hello. How are you? I, I'm good. I am. Um, I want to dive right in because I want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff we were saying before we recorded. Yeah. Um, I asked Ash right when we jumped on our call with each other today if she's heard anything or seen anything about this upcoming total solar eclipse in Aries on April 8th because I'm starting to hear a lot. I don't I am not the world's biggest TikToker. Um, I'm on TikTok technically, but I I take it in like doses. I don't, it's not a daily scroll for me, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Ash, have you been seeing or hearing about any buzz before I asked you about it today? Well, um, yeah. And uh, I feel like this happens during eclipse season every year. Everybody and their mom That's comes out of the woodwork, you know, totally. with, you know, what they want to talk about with the eclipse. But like, these are the same people that say astrology is dumb when we're not in eclipse season, you know, <laughs> shade. Yes. <laughs> like, you know, I'm yes. shading these people because these are literally the same people that are like creating these TikToks and creating this content around like, be scared are literally the same people that are damning our craft at any other time. So I personally feel like I take everything with a grain of salt and I trust in the years of study that I've had. And I also trust in the fact that this isn't our first eclipse season. We have eclipse season every single year. And every year there's a different focal point for the eclipse season. And um, yeah, it's a big boy. This is a big eclipse. There's a lot going on. Um, There's lots of focal points. That is to say, and I know we're going to get into it, but, you know, where we're seeing the solar eclipse, there's a lot of um, planetary bodies around it making noise. But in my personal opinion, we are dealing with a lot of the same themes that we've been working with except supercharged. 
right? Makes me think of like one of those video games, like a Mario or something. Forgive me, video gamers. I don't do that. But you know, when they can get the supercharged thing or whatever, and they go speed or turbo or some shit like that. Totally. That's what the power up. makes me think of. Yeah. yeah, like a power up. A power up. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, I, first of all, you're echoing so many of my gut feelings and intuitive nudges I've been getting as I've been seeing. I even had a couple of neighbors reach out to me and ask um, what my thoughts were on this, if we could cover the eclipse. And of course, when I looked, I was like, oh, this is a new moon anyways. So who better to dive into the energy of the solar eclipse than than you, Ash? Um, Because we'll go there, basically. You know, you're one of those people Mm -hmm. like, we'll go there. Yeah. I agree When I did my first general search on TikTok, that's where that's just where I saw the most buzz. There's definitely plenty on Instagram. Don't get me wrong, Um, but let's let's call it what it is. You know, TikTok. We're gonna have a little more whistleblowing. I feel there's a lot of Mm -hmm. getting on your soapbox with the TikTok is on him. It's the vibe. Totally. Yes, it's a wild west. Is what I've been calling it. It is. It is wild west of social media. It serves its purpose for that reason. Don't get me wrong. But as soon as I did my general search, I mean, the top things that I'm shown, and I don't know, I don't know nearly enough about the function of the app of TikTok itself to understand, like, if I search something, if it shows up the same, if you search the exact same thing, you know what I mean? So I, who knows? But when I did search it, all of the videos that I saw that scrolled through, well, not a single one was from an astrologer. Um, yeah. And I'm sorry, not sorry. That's like the first person you need to go to if you're going to right. whistleblow a goddamn eclipse. Are you right. kidding me? Right. Um, there's obviously things outside of astrology we can talk about mm-hmm. in connection to an eclipse. Mm-hmm. But if we're talking about addressing the masses, what could this possibly mean? The word prophecy was thrown around, which I was yeah. at first I I interpret I or I I received that and was kind of like I received it in that ominous way it's given. And I was like, really? Mm-hmm. What is a bit about this? Mm-hmm. But as soon as I started looking, I was like, we could use the word prophecy for literally every single astrological transit that we seriously. Thought. That's what predictive astrology is. <laughs> what the, exactly? That's, that's what, what predictive is. astrology is. Yes. I mean, that makes me think of when Neptune went into Pisces, you know, and the yes. uptick of the, the spiritual work and the spiritual community finally gets its its flowers. If you will, you know what I mean? That could be considered a prophecy. You know, the rainbow mm-hmm. children, indigo children can be considered a prophecy. Like mm-hmm. there's so many areas of astrology that could be considered prophetic. I mean, um, Saturn and Jupiter conjunction. What was that? The 2020 conjunction? Yes. Was that in 2020? I, I remember all of that. I, yes. I mean, that felt very prophetic. Everybody it and their was mom was talking solstice, about I'm it. I'm pretty sure too. It was on Yeah, it was on solstice. solstice. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, you know, um, I think we hear the word prophecy and I think a lot of us, I mean, not to tangent, but to tangent a little bit, we go back into like our religious trauma and we think yes, we do Bible and biblical, we doomsday it, you know, because mm-hmm. anytime the word prophecy is brought up in mainstream Western religion, it's tied to something bad, negative, evil, yep. mm-hmm. punishment. Yes. We told you so, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I love that. That's so true that we told you so. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of different ways we can look at the word prophecy. Absolutely. That don't forget, so... people, you know, TikTok, they want clickbait. So they're going to use those clickbaity words to get yes. you to continue to watch. Yes. So as we're ingesting this content right now, let's just make sure that we're very grounded when we do so. Yes. So yeah. this is this is something that I talk about on my Monday episodes on Moon Day Musings. Every week we cleanse and reset our energy at the beginning of the episode because that is how you should step into reading astrology whether you're Mm -hmm. like looking at your transits for the day looking up the the energy of an eclipse whatever it is astrology in my opinion is most effectively received 
and therefore applied through a grounded um, heart and an open mind, period. Like, I would agree. If you are in a place of emotional demand and you show up to the chart that way, it's going to reflect back at you, my, my friend. It's going to reflect that right back at you. Sounds a little bit like tarot. It sounds a little bit like tarot, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And I love very that. that uh, and very good point with emotional demand, because I notice a lot of people come to spiritual workers in that energy, yes. that emotional demand energy. Fix me, fix what's wrong. Yes. Show me what's wrong. And that is not the point of spiritual work whatsoever. No. It's, you know, a, a place of exploration, of self discovery, of getting to know who you truly are, not the mask that you put on to yourself or to others, and really stepping into that highest version of yourself available. And we don't do that through emotional demand, we do that through no. emotional awareness. Exactly. You, the definition, I think a lot of people, I'm going to talk about throwing some shade. Let's do Inside the spiritual industry and community, don't fucking know what grounding is. Mm -hmm. Straight up. And it's, it's that, that grounded and being grounded and ground your energy. Mm -hmm. That term is used so much. And it's because it's important. Don't get me wrong. It is important. But I don't think a lot of people know what that actually means. And the best way I always describe it is I'm like, it's your most pure state of presence and awareness. That's what it's Mm -hmm. about bringing your awareness and presence as strong in the current moment and your current present surroundings as Mm -hmm. possible. Look Mm -hmm. at the techniques, even in like therapy and mental health for grounding. They are all about presence and awareness and coming into your body because you're feeling very disconnected from it at that point. And this Mind, makes sense. body, soul, baby. Mind, exactly. body, soul. Exactly. You got to understand it together. makes sense that we feel disconnected from our bodies mm. sometimes because we are this holy trinity trifecta of mind, body, spirit. Right. And we can lean into our mental energy field or we can lean into our, our spiritual or ethereal energy field and kind of leave our physical field and that's okay. It's a beautiful thing that we're able to do. Mm-hmm. But you kind of want that balancing act of all three before you embark in any kind of spiritual work, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, go to somebody to help you get there. You know, totally. like if you're, you know, like if you're like, I don't know where to begin, that's one thing. But going to an astrologer to be like, am I doomed for this eclipse? You know, that's not yes. the the vibe or going on no. TikTok and getting all your information from a lot of those sources. Like, I'm just a firm believer in finding a professional that works for you, right? Could be Danny, could be me, could be somebody else. A professional that you vibe with and that you trust with this very sacred work. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a reason why it's been around for like ever. It still drives me up a wall when people try to um, dismiss it or like belittle it because it's like, babe, like this work has been around for so long. Like, why don't you stop and question why? Why it's 2024. We are living in the future. Why has it not gone away? Like so many other theories, ideas, ways of being have. There's a reason why. It's, It's for a reason. Absolutely. So... Let's get into the energy of this eclipse a little bit. So anyone that wants to pull up the chart for this or pull up the transit in their chart, the date and time for this total solar eclipse is April 8th at 2.20 p.m. Eastern time. And when you pull that up, you should see the sun and the moon both, right? New moon at solar eclipse time at 19 degrees and 24 minutes of Aries. And I don't normally read that. I'm going to explain it for anybody that, because I've definitely never, I rarely, rarely bring up the minute mark. Most astrologers rarely bring up the minute mark unless your mm-hmm. job deals in like orary astrology where the the exact uh, measurement of a placement is incredibly, incredibly important, or it's to distinguish how strong um, a conjunction is. It's 
yes, they're both at 19 degrees, but what minute of 19 degrees? So I'm not going to go into too much detail about like how the minute marks are calculated. That's for an astrology class. But just know that the minute marks are like a degree within the degree itself mm -hmm. to distinguish how if two placements are at the same degree, how cl physically close to each other. It's just a, it's mm -hmm. an even further measurement of. The measurement, of right. Exactly, specificity. So we have the sun and the moon at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aries. And if you pull up this chart and you have your settings turned on so that you can see the asteroid Chiron in your chart, you will also see that asteroid Chiron is going to be at 19 degrees, 24 minutes of Aquarius at the same, sorry, of Aries at the same time. And mm -hmm. this is, this is a big boy. Like that means something for sure. Yeah. And Aries has been playing a role in many of our new moons because you and I have talked about Chiron um, a lot. I was just going to say that we have pushed out a lot of content around Chiron over the last year. And, and the reason why, especially if those of you that are new to either of our universes or even shadow chats, Chiron has been hanging out in Aries for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. So Chiron has come up. Um, this is like Chiron's big show. You know, totally. this is game day for Chiron, if you ask me. You know what this made me think of? And it was really echoed when you were talking at the very, very beginning about this being amplified, like mm -hmm. what we've been talking about, but amplified, is how we use quartz in ritual and magic. Yeah. And quartz, if you don't already know, is a universal stone. It can be programmed to be any crystal that you need it to be. So it's wonderful for any witch or crystal healer on a right. budget because you can program quartz to be anything you want. But more than that, quartz is a spiritual and energetic and physical amplifier. There's a reason sure we is. use quartz in our technology. As quartz human makes beings. everything bigger. Yes. Exactly. It's like Texas. That's what this made me think of. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh Are we cracking myself up? <laughs> Not like Texas, but kind of. <laughs> no shade to Texas. No shade to Texas. Okay. <laughs> uh, Quartz is a compliment, Texas. So, yes. Yes. So we've got Chiron exact. Ex you can't get any more exact practically, although we can't right. go into the even further. There's right. even more specific astrology than that, if you can even believe it, beginners. But we've got this Chiron right there. Uh, Mercury is certainly not far away. Um, nope. About five degrees away, also in Aries. Uh, mm -hmm. Venus will be in Aries at this point. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the North Node. Yeah. Is We've got a lot. So, Ash, we know that the people are going to come up or come across a fuck ton of fear mongering around this eclipse. Yeah, they, if they already aren't. They if you aren't. already aren't. And if you haven't, I don't know if you've been living under a rock or anything, if you haven't already noticed, there's been this ominous, this is why I think people jumped on this eclipse because it, it's definitely a big one, but I think that a lot of people have been waiting. That's when the shoe's going to drop. That's when it's going to happen. I think a lot of people want to like know, quote unquote, this big, terrible thing that's coming because no matter where you listen to podcasts or get your social media, there has been a lot of fear mongering in our media for a long, long, long time now. I mean, since I, forever, it's how they keep us controlled, right? Yes. I think there's some validity because I think that our society is in the middle of a massive transformation and shedding. I would period. agree. I but would agree. I also think we need to take this concept of amplification into consideration as well. Mm -hmm. So, Ash, knowing that this is all in Aries, hothead Aries, how would you advise people approach 
learning about leaning into the energy of this upcoming eclipse because we know what Aries tends to do in the face of fear. Well, I think the first thing that comes to mind is like, worry about you, boo. Like, that's like the biggest thing. Aries energy can sometimes take a lot of things personally. And in general, when it comes to social media and all of that, one could argue that social media is this one big cesspool of worrying about everybody else's business. And, you know, when we've got all like Mercury's there, the planet of mind and mouth, Venus is there, you know, what we love, how we love business. North Node is there, the node of destiny. You've got Chiron there, you know, which is our wounded healer. So like depending on where you're at on your own spiritual journey, I could easily see all of this eclipse energy potentially turning into something where like you are projecting your deepest fears and and worries onto other people, right? You're making somebody else the problem. Maybe somebody triggered you and then you're, you're giving it back to somebody else, you know? Here's the thing. Eclipse season in general is a weird time. You know, there's a reason why the animals act all spooked out and stuff. And stats will say it, just like on full moons, you know, there are more visits to the ER and full moons. So, you know, full transparency, the energy is probably going to be a little wonky. But, you know, I think what we are bringing up is how are we choosing to react to the wonky energy. And I can't help but notice the North Node is there. That is collectively for everybody. And so it's like, what are we going to do with the situation is the word that came through. And when I say the situation, whatever situation you got, we all got a situation, right? We all have something that we got to work out, all of us in in our lives. And so maybe instead of saying, fuck it, I'll do it tomorrow, or pretending it doesn't exist, or even projecting our shit onto other people. Maybe we worry about ourselves and we deal with said situation or situations for that Mm -hmm. matter. And again, not taking things personally. Aries has this this knee-jerk reaction to take things very personally and lash out because of that. So if you have a lot of Aries placements, or if this is happening in a, in a... I guess a house of importance, they're all important. But um, when I say a house of importance, I mean a house that is fired up, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, Like the eighth house or something like that, or even the 12th house, you know, some of those more ominous houses that this eclipse Mm -hmm. might be happening into, you're going to be more likely to respond in a way that isn't how you normally would. And I say that because Mercury is also playing ball in here. And again, it's the planet of mind and mouth. And so how we think and how we speak, I personally want you to put it under a microscope. Just be very aware of what you're saying and how you're saying and why you're saying certain things and to whom you're saying them to around this eclipse time. Um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting time for sure. Not necessarily bad or good, just interesting, Mm -hmm. you know. Aries, any sign, actually. You have to understand that every single one of our attributes, and this goes for all the archetypal energies of the zodiac, every single one of our, our strengths can be a weakness too. Everything exactly. about ourselves, anything, exactly. anything you could pick out that is a weakness about you on the flip side could also be seen as a strength. Okay, Everything mm-hmm. has that inherent universal duality and polarity in it. Mm-hmm. When it comes to Aries specifically, there is this strength and skill in not being afraid to take action and Agreed. jump into action and not mm-hmm. wait by the waysides and and not let fear of fill in the blank hold mm-hmm. you back from taking action the instant shadow quality of that and this is what came up for me while you were talking is that hyper reactivity um god talk about emotional demand when it comes to a shadow quality of Right. Really any of the cardinal signs, Mm -hmm. Um, any of the cardinal signs, we are going to see themes around impatience and reactivity. Look Mm -hmm. at cancer, 
Look at Capricorn, look at Ooh. Libra, and look at Aries. Libra has this reputation of going from zero to fucking psycho in mm -hmm. two seconds. Um, mm -hmm. Capricorn, same exact thing. And Cancer, we all know some Cancer sun in our life that, or we've been that Cancer reactor in our own story of like that as a person with the Cancer Chiron, like I totally understand that water reactor. Cancer Chiron over here too. Yes. So when it comes to Aries, think of that emotional demand, but physically acting on it because that's what Aries doesn't think Aries does. Mm -hmm. And again, there are places where that is a strength and a beautiful th fucking thing. It reminds me of the full card in a lot of ways, like, mm -hmm. and very Knight of Wands, of course, this, I, I'm going to take action no matter who's on my side or not, if I have to be alone or whether I'm supported, it doesn't fucking matter. I'm going because I'm going. And um, and Aries honestly doesn't even say any of that. They're already going. They they mm -hmm. haven't, their brain hasn't even processed any of that. So I want to ask you this because I think this could really be beneficial for beginners and intermediate, especially people trying to become astrologers, like professional astrologers. When we look at Chiron in the chart, the birth chart, I think it's a little bit easier to really pinpoint a Chiron placement for a person. There's a nuance to reading collective placements for everybody. How do you, like if you were giving a reading to someone, Ash, about this upcoming eclipse, how would you talk about that collective Chiron and how the people might experience that? Um, because it is a little bit different than one person's individual Chiron. Well, I think the first thing that we have to do is look at Aries qualities, right? And then we have to look at what Chiron represents. And so, you know, Aries qualities, taking initiative, leadership, you know, inspiration, drive, force, power, um, sometimes anger, lashing out. Um, selfishness. It's about me. And then we think about Chiron, our wounded healer, the pain points, right? What needs to come up and out? So as far as the collective reading goes, again, lashing out, mm -hmm. right? And maybe you're not the person who's lashing out. Maybe your kid is having like a three-day temper tantrum and you're like, what the fuck is going on with you right now? How do I soothe you? And this brings up a good point. All of this content that we're ingesting around astrology, around spirituality, tarot, meditation, Reiki, breath work, now is the time. Now is the time, well, all year round, but especially right now where emotions are more heightened than normal, mm -hmm. not just in you, but with everybody around you, especially those that don't fully understand. People that walk a spiritual path, whether you listen to this podcast as a hobby or whether this is your main squeeze job. People that walk a spiritual path do have a better sense of self-awareness than the average everyday Joe walking down the street. And I'm going to stand on that. And so with that being said, maybe your partner's being a douche canoe and you don't understand why. That's when you kind of go into your Rolodex of being like, let's do some grounding. Let's go mm -hmm. for a walk. Let's drink some water. Maybe we sleep in an extra hour. Maybe we turn off the television. You know, we start really going into our Rolodex of everything that we've learned and taken on and try to adjust to what's happening, right, inside of our world. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're only in control of ourselves and the world still has to go around. So people are still going to be going to work. People are still going to be interacting with people. People are still going to be going to the gym. People are still going to be hanging out. Kids still got to go to school. But we still have to live our life. And so with that being said, we can't prepare you because we don't know what interactions you may or may not have. Somebody could cut you off on the road and that could send you into a spiral and you never get road rage. Mm -hmm. And so I think the most important thing when it comes to this eclipse season in general, but especially this April 8th eclipse, is to really remember 
all the things that you've learned, whether you have bought programs, whether you've been doing free learning, whether you are fully in your craft, what sorts of things have you leaned on that's really helped you? I know for me, I love tapping, the EFT tapping, Mm -hmm. one of my favorite Mm -hmm. things to do, love tapping. And so maybe around this time, maybe I might amp up my tapping a bit more. Maybe I include it in my morning routine on the regular for that week instead of when Mm -hmm. I feel like it, you know? And we just allow ourselves to be in a space of hyper awareness, not just of ourselves, but of the people that we hang around the most because we share energy with those people. Yes, yes. That is such, such solid practical advice because I totally agree As a person who used to give a fuck all about my well-being and my mental health and how my actions and and energy was affecting other people to being a person who literally lives by it now and teaches others how to, I can tell you from personal witness, multiple time experience, that a day that I I make sure I have that buzz term filled my cup. I've moved mm-hmm. my body. I've hydrated my body. Mm-hmm. I've fed it. I've let it rest. I've given mm-hmm. it play time. Like I've given it breaks. I've given it challenges. Like all these little check boxes for my nervous system versus a day that I don't do that and something that comes across my path that pisses me off, rubs me the wrong way. Right. I wasn't expecting. I Activates you somehow. Coming. Yeah. The difference in how I react and respond to those two things are night or in those two scenarios are night and day difference. I would agree. Like night and day difference. A, a day that I... I have a perfect, perfect example. This has happened to me multiple times as a young mother of a young child where when your kid gets home from school, like (laughs) they need to decompress. Who the fuck wouldn't? They are gone for seven hours. They are given like a total of one hour total the whole day to actually Mm. like play really. Yes, it's been so much so much mental work and stimulation Mm -hmm. and having to like keep themselves contained and controlled and follow Mm -hmm. all the, I mean, it's so, so much. And so when they get home to a place of comfort, they like expand instantly. Like all of their energy physically and, and energetically just expands. And the, there have been days where I have just had this like beautiful day where I was able to check all of my boxes and I've even you know maybe reached out to a couple of people and just been like this is just such a good day are you having a good day and I picked up my kid to to what I've learned to be a nightmare who had a Mm -hmm. nightmare of a day who's about to have a nightmare of a night and Mm -hmm. every single time that happens I'm like oh my god no wonder spirit cleared the way for me yeah, to make sure to, to I had hold time that. to do everything. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. I'm so mm-hmm. glad I let myself make sure I was taken care of today because mm-hmm. I can take it. I can take it when exactly. that happens. Exactly. I've got the capacity for it. And so that, you know, translate that experience into your own lifestyle and whatever that looks like for you. But you cannot, this is why fill your cup, self-care, these buzz terms are existing because they fucking work. Your tools work. You do have to use them though. 100%. I think that's my, my biggest thing that I love reminding people of because, and I do that because like, I'm that person too. I'm sure you are too. If I could count how many programs I've paid for that, you know, some I use, some I don't, some I looked through once, some I didn't finish, Pull that shit out. That's also, Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's the North Node and Aries to go back to the chart that we're looking at. You know, North Node is a node of destiny, where we're going as a collective. What sort of world do you want to create? I posed that question before here on this podcast, and it's a very valid question right now. 
maybe you do some self-study. Aries, again, is very much about the self. That's why we're working with this axis, you know, this Libra Aries axis. So maybe you take some time during this eclipse week. It doesn't have to be on the day of. Mm -hmm. You know, I personally suggest doing a lot of rest the day of. Watch the eclipse if you're in an area where you could watch it. And, you know, I do, because it's a lot of energy within the collective, within the cosmos, within all of that, like, watch the eclipse and maybe hibernate. That's my personal opinion. But like the day after or the day before or a couple of days after or a couple of days before, maybe pull out one of those programs that you didn't fully go through. Maybe listen to that podcast episode that you've got saved that you've never really gotten to yet. I know I've got a bunch, you know, maybe do something to help stimulate the world that you want to create micro Lee in your little microcosm and in the macro, because it starts with the micro first. It starts with your home first. It starts with your daily first, before we can even consider the powers that be, before we can even consider laws and regulation and religion and and how we're making money and how we're spending money and who we're giving it to and, you know, the dark agenda. Before we can even go there, we have to look at what we're doing in our everyday you know, and I think this is a really good time to do that because again, Aries is one of the major signs of self. It really yeah. truly is. So we really got to take that into account before we think about fear mongering and what's going to happen. Because going back to what you were saying, it's all this fear mongering. I'm like, what's going to happen in the world? No, that is a distraction. Aries is the sign of self. What's happening within your world? Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. happening with mm -hmm. you? Absolutely. Fuck all the noise. Hey, neighbor. I am going to pause this episode for just a brief moment because I want you to ask yourself something. Do you want to be able to read a chart and talk about it so fluently the way that you're listening to Ashley and I talk about it right now in this episode? This is exactly why I created my program, I Can Read My Astrology Inside and Out. This is a program that began with our first level in January of 2024. And now in April, coming up this weekend, it is time for level two of our course, which dives deep into each of the 12 zodiac signs and looks at the modalities, the elements, and the polarities of the Zodiac. And truth be told, this is actually probably not just my favorite class to teach in the entire program. Um, this is one of my favorite classes that I get to teach, period, in general. Um, because I love peeling back the layers of the Zodiac signs and getting to know them just as well as the characters in my favorite book series or my favorite television series. If this sounds like something that you are excited about, that you want to learn how to understand and really get to know the zodiac signs from the inside out, more than just memorizing a bunch of symbols and, and keywords, this course is for you. All of the details that you need to register are in the show notes below. You can register for just $99 to join us for level two, or if you enroll as a full-time student in that witch school for only $30 a month, you get access to not only this course, but the entire program and so, so much more amazing, valuable educational content in witchcraft and astrology. Thanks so much for your time. And now back to our episode. One of the best, I might have even talked about it on the show before, one of the most helpful concepts I was ever given, and it was in a group support group um, a long time ago, was this concept of the hula hoop theory. Mm. And you picture yourself inside of a hula hoop. And everything that's inside of the hula hoop is what you can control. And everything outside of that hula hoop is what is out of your control. Exactly. And that's there's some gonna Aries be, fucking wisdom. Exactly. It is. If there's going to be a World War III, we can't do shit about it. But what we can do is we can ground, we can meditate, we can prepare ourselves mentally for it. You know, it's like all of these potentials 
the what we do know is that we are in a space of change. I think whether you're spiritual, and I put that in quotes because everybody thinks they're spiritual nowadays. And I don't mean shade to that. I just mean, let's make sure we're walking our walk, people. And if you feel yeah, triggered by that, yes, yeah, exactly. like if you feel triggered by that, right. then maybe there's some work that needs to be done there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, my, my point being is we can only control what we can control and everything on the outside of it that we can. And, you know, it's, it's kitschy, it's cute, it's fun to see some of this content on like, well, this is going here and Uranus is going to be here and then that happens here. So when that happens, if that means this law is going to be passed and all of that. Okay, but like, how, how does that pertain to you? Why don't you start by understanding what your moon sign really means? Because your moon sign is the sign of subconscious emotion and maybe yeah, you'll really understand. Mm-hmm. Some- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why don't you start learning about how the fuck you cope with life? When I fully understood my Aquarius moon, so much shit made sense with how I attach, how I detach, and why I attach and detach in the way that I do. Mm -hmm. When I fully like dove into my Aquarius moon. Exactly. That that. is, that's a hugely important point. And one thing that came up for me too, was I always see eclipses do one or the other. There's rarely a gray space. I see it lay you flat out or energize the living fuck out of you. And you are like, you feel this excess in energy. And if it is one tip that I know you will fully support here and resonate with, it's move. Move your body, go channel that rage, go do an angry mm-hmm. workout, do what my daughter and I call an angry dance party. And we put on like screaming, angry music, do the rage workout at the gym. We all mm-hmm. have like that rage thing. Do it. Mm-hmm. Go, go punch the living shit out of your mattress or whatever. Like, therapy. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do the rage therapy because honestly, Get that cortisol out of your system. That That's is a, a very good point. sacred way Aries cleanses. You know what I mean? Yes. Releasing that way. And don't, that's just one of the final things I wanted to wrap up on and ask you about is like, I think that because anger has been demonized for so long, because yes, we can do dangerous things when we're angry. It's the shadow mm-hmm. side of it, but we know it's not all shadow either. No. How can you channel that and release it in a safe way? Dude, anger can really move the needle. Mm-hmm. And it really has been demonized. But like when somebody frustrates the fuck out of you or when somebody says you can't do it and you're like, watch me prove you wrong, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes we need that anger to propel us forward. It's when that anger gets digested in a way that becomes like when you're self-harming, yeah. when you are not regulated, when you're suppressing it. Exactly, right? when you're holding that, it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're tight like a ball, that's not good. But dude, I'm a huge fan of scream therapy, of allowing it to happen. You know, I know we we have to wrap up, but another quick example, I was having a day like two days ago, woke up wrong side of the bed. I was like, things don't feel right. You know, just getting a little frustrated, a little testy, a little spicy. And I was like, you know what? We're closing down shop today. I'm not going, I'm not going to move through my day with this weird, unsettled anger that I'm projecting onto other people. Exactly. Let me get that shit regulated. Let me check myself and have a few seats. And so I leaned on my team. I said, guys, this is what needs to be done. I'm going on do not disturb. And I'm going to regulate that anger and allow it to come out. Talk Mm -hmm. about what's frustrating me. Talk about what's going on and let it release. I woke up the next day like a new woman, slept nine hours and I woke up like a new woman. It's when we feel like we have to move through the day. And that is very patriarchal. No matter what's going on, no matter how you feel, you still have to do the day. Like the bills still got to get paid. You still got to be there on time. Like, no, that's not the world that I want to create. I want to acknowledge my emotions and my feelings, no matter what they look like. Yes. Period. You know? Not everyone has afforded this luxury and privilege, but if you are that scared or just worried about the eclipse, 
see if you can take that day off if you are employed yeah. by somebody else. You know, put, yeah. in, put that request in and see if you can put, if you have mm-hmm. sick time to use or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's okay if, I'm so glad that you used that example because mm-hmm. you you have, if you shift your mindset around anger from being this terrifying thing you have to, keep hidden from the world and from yourself right. and you can never you don't realize you're housing all of that if you can shift that into seeing sacred rage therapy as a good cry and that yes it's tiring and it's cathartic and you you do you feel that like tired almost like crying hangover mm-hmm. but how amazing do you feel when you wake up from a nap or from a exactly. good night's sleep after a huge release and cry like that It is the same with anger. We it only has the opposite effect when we let it or use it to harm. That's when we're going to be left with these feelings of shame around our anger, Mm -hmm. and and it was really unsafe and irresponsible. So recognize it. Ashley's story is perfect. Recognize it. Mm -hmm. Own up to it. Say Mm -hmm. it's okay. Especially inner child who was probably taught it was so incredibly wrong to be angry. Right. Say it's okay. Show up for yourself and give your, maybe it's not taking the whole day off. Maybe it's asking for a half day. Maybe it's asking right. for an extended lunch because you, you mm-hmm. need it or what it like. I, yeah. I am this, I totally, totally agree with that. Cause I think with Chiron there, we're going to, we're going to see either yes. a spike in yes. anger or our trig like us feeling triggered by triggered. the act of anger yes 100% I fully agree with you Chiron is playing a major role in this eclipse and I think that's where a lot of this fear mongering is coming from but once we understand what we're looking at and why we understand how to deal with it and that's really mm-hmm. the key with this eclipse in my personal opinion allowing Chiron to, we have to remember like the wounded healer the wounded healer is here to show us yes. how we can be of service to others. It's to show us yeah. some of our deepest core wounds, you know? Like, that's why the wounded healer is in astrology in the first place. Go so read it, Chiron's story for this eclipse. Please. Go fucking read Chiron's mythology because it mm-hmm. is, even if you've already read it, because I think it will help a lot of people. It is I that so reframe you need. Mm-hmm. I, I also have an episode on the goddess complex, uh, Chiron, the wounded healer, that goes deep mm-hmm. into the mythology too, if you're more of an auditory person. But I, I fully agree that that should be a thing because we don't need to fear Chiron. We just have to understand what Chiron wants from us in the face of Aries as a collective key word. Yes. You know, and it starts again on the micro level. And then we spew that out and it becomes a ripple effect. This was so good. This mm-hmm. was the eclipse episode. I know you needed my friend because I, I really, I I am not going to be like ignorant or arrogant enough to say, oh, absolutely nothing's going to happen with this eclipse. Right. Like nothing, nothing at all. And like Ash said, think about where you're getting your information from right now. And quite Please, frankly, friends. go to professional, experienced Please. astrologers first if you want to learn about mm-hmm. an eclipse. Right. Don't Absolutely. do the stuff on TikTok. Yeah. No. So uh, this was amazing. Ash, um, for anyone um, listening, especially anybody that was brand new with us today, please let us all know how we can find you, follow you and support your work. Yeah, so I'm actually doing an Eclipse series. So if you want to come in, um, this is an intimate group where I'm going to be doing just work on the Eclipse astrology. I'm keeping it small on purpose. So I have the time to look at all of your charts and all of that. And those are going to be the day before each Eclipse. So we already had the first one. We're gearing up for the second one. And then we've got the third and fourth coming up too. So if you want to join us in that, I'll make sure Danny has the link for the link in bio. Otherwise, you can find me on the gram, Ashley Michelle, 90 day, TikTok, same thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you, my dear. This was good. Yes. Much needed conversation today. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Mm -hmm. Everyone, uh, please keep sharing your love, your suggestions, your feedback with us. What do you want to hear more about on Shadow Chats, of course? And thank you, of course, for your time today and every single day with us here at That Witch Podcast. 
I am Danny, and I hope that all of you have a wonderful week. Make sure that you stay safe. Of course, that you're letting yourself have some damn fun out there these days. And stay magical, my friends. We're just looking for that witch outside of that witch podcast. Make sure you're following me on social media, over on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and Twitter. You can find links to all of those in the show notes below. And make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter by going to thatwitchnextdoor.com and submitting your email on the homepage.